Hello designers, welcome back to another quick video. So if you just got started with Figma and you feel that you're a bit slow in designing the screens, well, even I've been there, but there are a couple of simple tips that can actually help you speed up your Figma workflow. So without any further ado, let's jump right onto the video and see what are these tips. But before getting started, there are actually shortcuts that you have to learn, which could actually really help you in speeding up your workflow. So if you're using a Mac, this is the command and this is option. The alternative for that on Windows is control and alt. So just keep that in mind. So I'll be showing all the Mac shortcuts. You just have to replace it with these keys. So starting off with the first one, this is paste replace. So you can just quickly replace elements on your designs by pasting over them. For example, I want to replace this with this one. So what I would do is just copy this, then delete this one, paste it and bring it here, right? So this is a long process. Instead of that, what you can do is just copy this one with command C or control C and click on this and use this shortcut here, right? Shift, command and R. So once I do that, it just replaces in the same exact position and there's no, the other element is gone, right? So this is a very simple simple tip that can actually help you do a lot of things. And you can also do this by the shortcut. So I just right click on this, you have paste to replace, right? So you can also use this or I always suggest you to learn the shortcuts is really useful. And now moving on to the next one, this is crop images. So you can use the simple tip to crop your images rather than using mask and everything. So mask is good for advanced cropping, but to simply just crop your image, just click on the image, uh, hold on the command or control in windows and just drag the edges, right? So this way you can simply crop the images. And if you want this to happen, evenly on both the sides use option as well so i press option and command and then start dragging so it does it from both the ends right so this way you can do it from both the ends or if you want just one end use the command option and moving on to the next one which is math operations so you can perform math operations directly on your design panel right here for example i have this rectangle and i want to make this rectangle exactly half the width of this frame so i'll see what is the width of the frame here which is 750 so i'll select the rectangle now and here i'll give 750 divided by 2 and boom there you go i I have a rectangle which is exactly half the width of the frame and for example I want to move this 30 pixels I just give it 30 here and let's say I want to change it a bit more I can add whatever value I want so plus 8 and now it is 38 from here so as you can see so that way you can use these operations to simplify your task of moving things and adjusting positions now moving on to the next one which is nudge value so this is also really useful so for example when you select a frame or any element and use the arrow keys it moves it by one pixel right for example you're using a grid system and the default nudge value is always 10 on Figma. For that, you just use shift and start moving. It moves it by 10 pixels to the left or 10 pixels wherever you move it. And you can also change this. Just go to the Figma option here and go to preferences. Here you have something called as nudge amount. Click on this and change it to whatever value you want. If you're using an 8 pixel grid system, just change it to 8 and it'll be really easy for you to move 8 pixels wherever you want while designing. And now moving on to the next one, which is scale tool. So this is really useful. Uh, for example, you want to scale some things. For example, this one, I use use shift or without shift it doesn't scale properly right so everything just gets crumpled and skewed if i want to maintain the same aspect ratio and the scaling ratio all you have to do is press k or here you have an option as well so if you go here you have move tool and scale tool so just switch to scale or use the shortcut k for switching to that and now uh, your cursor changes to this particular thing that you see here and now if i start increasing it right you can see that it increases evenly in the same ratio and if you want to anchor it at the center and increase it just use also option along with shift and now you can see that it increases from the center keeping maintaining all the aspect ratio and the scaling properties moving on to the next one this is tidy up so you can use tidy up to quickly tidy up things on your screen for example i have these uh, elements right here so i select all of these and now i just simply use a shortcut which is control option and t or i can also use the option or the key from here so here also you have this tidy up so once i click on this everything gets tidied up so if you have something really scrambled on the screen you can use this option option to quickly tidy up things and now moving on to the next one this is distance between elements so this is really useful while designing so in case you want to find the distance with respect to another element just select the first element and press option or alt on windows and just hover on the different elements and you can see the distance with respect to that right so for the distance with respect to this is 50 and with this it's 99 so i just move it a pixel down and now it's 100 so that's how you can use this distance to quickly calculate the distance with respect to different elements moving on to the next one this is duplicate your last action this is really useful when you want to repeat a particular pattern so first thing i will duplicate this one just select the element that you want press on option or alt and drag it out of it click and drag an element out of it so this way it remembers your action and now when i press command d which is duplicating it duplicates it remembering the same action that you performed previously so now i select all of these three and i use option 
and I bring it to the right. And now it remembers this action, right? So once I press on command D, it duplicates it this way. So that way you can easily create a grid or any pattern that you want to create. And it remembers that particular action. Moving on to the next one, which is copy and paste properties is really useful and it can be really helpful while creating a lot of screens. So for example, in this case, you can see that these both are different uh, because of the styling properties. So what I'll do is I'll select the first one and I'll use the option, which is option command and C to copy the properties. So I've copied it. You can also also right click and do the same thing from here which is copy as and say copy properties and then select the next one and I'll use the shortcut to paste the properties you can do it from here as well and go to paste properties or use the shortcut which is option command and V and there you go the rounded corners and the shadow has been applied properly and this works for the text as well so I click on the text here and I'll copy it and I'll select this text and paste it and there you go now it looks perfectly synced so that way you can copy and paste properties and this is also really helpful and the last one is place images so let's say you have a lot of images you're creating an e-commerce or a food website and you want to replace these images you don't have to bring them in the image crop it and place it here all you can do is just use a shortcut here or go to this option here file and select place images so once you select that food images that are here so i just select all these and click on open and now we can just drop these images right onto the placeholders here right so i just click and it gets applied on all these layers. So in this way, you can very easily apply images to multiple placeholders. So those are the 10 tips for this video, guys. And this is part one. And if you want a part two with more tips, do comment below that you want a part two. And I'll definitely make sure to make a part two video of this. So as always, thanks for watching and happy designing.